Hello everyone! Welcome to the Organizational Theory and Design course. Today, we'll continue with Chapter 6, Innovation and Change. In this chapter, we will firstly be talking about innovation and then organizational change. If you are ready, we can start with innovation. Innovation is an important determinant of organizational performance and longer-term survival. Innovation can be defined as the implementation of a new or significantly improved product or a new organizational method. There are three types of innovation – process innovation, product innovation, and organizational innovation. Process innovation is a company's effort to refine and improve its current processes. In the early stages of industry development, product innovation is vital. However, over time, product innovation becomes less critical and process innovations designed to reduce manufacturing costs and increase product quality become more critical. Product innovation is the new or recombined knowledge incarnate in a new product. We can characterize product innovation along two dimensions – the degree to which it involves a change in technical competencies and the degree to which it involves a change in business mode. Although each dimension exists on a continuum, together they suggest four quadrants or categories of innovation – routine, radical, disruptive, and architectural innovations. Organizational innovation is the implementation of a new organizational method in the company context. The distinguishing characteristics of organizational innovation is the implementation of an organizational method that has not been used before in the company and that is the result of strategic management decisions. There are three types of organizational innovation. Organizational innovation in business practice, innovation in workplace organization, and innovation in organization methods for external relationships. Innovation process has three stages – invention, development, and implementation. Invention refers to the emergence of an idea. The key mechanism of invention is exploration, which includes things represented by words such as search, variation, risk-taking, experimentation, play, flexibility, and discovery. Invention includes generating an insight about the customer's problem or need and profoundly understanding this problem or need. Elaboration of the idea takes place at the development stage. After identifying a customer problem worth solving, innovators search broadly for a variety of solutions and then use a series of prototypes. A prototype is a full-scale working model that is being tested for design, function, and reliability. Implementation means the widespread acceptance of the innovation. The central mechanism of implementation is exploitation, which contains such things as refinement, choice, production, efficiency, selection, and execution. The new and different will probably not be adopted by everybody because people have invested time and emotions to the status quo. Let's move on to organizational change. Organizational change refers to alterations in how people's responsibilities, tasks, and relationships are organized. Companies have had to adjust from a world in which they only needed to make organizational changes from time to time to one where they must be prepared to make them almost continuously. Change, paradoxically, has become an organizational constant. Organizational change is usually oriented to improving effectiveness and efficiency at one or more of four different targets – strategy, technology, structure, and people or the culture. Strategic change refers to alterations in a company's corporate, business level, or functional strategies. Mergers and acquisitions Outsourcing and entering strategic alliances are the most common corporate change attempts. Structural change means any change in the patterned or regularized aspects of the relationships among participants in the organization. We can observe the structural change through modifications on organizational variables such as hierarchy, formalization, specialization, centralization, or job design. 
Technological change means changing the hardware, like equipment, machines, and instruments, which are used in performing work and skills and knowledge of employees. Cultural change includes changes in beliefs and values like ideals, goals, values, aspirations, ideologies, and rationalizations, or things like basic underlying assumptions. There are two types of organizational change, prescribed change and planned change. It is important to note that change can be undertaken at different levels, ranging from the company as a whole to the organization of a particular unit or area of activity, down to changes in individual jobs and the people who carry them out. Its focus can range from broad to narrow. Prescribed change progresses through a non-arbitrary sequence of stages and activities over time. Activities in prescribed change are prescribed and regulated by natural or institutional routines. Prescribed change is gradual and incremental. Planned change models view development as a repetitive sequence of goal formulation, implementation, evaluation, and modification of a pictured and state-based on what was learned or intended by the people involved. Planned change is rapid and dramatic. The need to constantly search for ways to improve efficiency and effectiveness makes it vital that managers develop the skills necessary to manage change effectively. The researchers have developed a model of change that managers can follow to implement change successfully. That is, to move an organization away from its present state and towards some desired future state to increase its efficiency and effectiveness. External or internal forces trigger the need for change within the organization. Many people are not willing to change unless they perceive a problem or a crisis. However, it is not a crisis that prompts the change in many cases. Once managers have identified the source of the problem or need, they must decide where they would like their organization to be in the future. Any organizational change is likely to meet with some resistance. After deciding the change to make, managers decide whether the change will be top-down or bottom-up. Top-down change is implemented by managers at a high level in the company. Bottom-up change is implemented by employees at low levels in the company and gradually rises until it is felt throughout the organization. A particular bottom-up change technique is organizational development. Organizational development is designed to improve an organization's long-term health and performance. The final step in the change process is to evaluate how successful the change effort has been. Using measures such as changes in market share, in profits, or the ability of scientists to innovate new drugs, managers compare how well an organization is performing after the change with how well it was performing before. So, this is the end of our program for Chapter 6 of the Organizational Theory and Design course. Goodbye, and see you in our next program, Chapter 7.